Welcome back to the treehouse, ladies and gentlemen. Exciting times here. Uh, we're, we have chicks that are going to be hatching out of the Rackley roost uh, any minute now, uh, any, any hour. Uh, I'm kind of on standby. My original plan was to go fishing today, next next couple days, but uh, I'm kind of kind of on watch. I'm on chick watch right now, so it might happen. It might happen during this vlog. Since I'm not going fishing today, waiting on the chicks. Working on a couple of things. I'm doing vessel prep. So I've got a challenge that I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, an extended hardcore uh, fishing video slash survival, what have you. So we're going to be doing vessel prep and also installing our, our new Doppler unit. Now this is uh, the forward facing sonar turret. This is the Foresight, uh, which also has a wireless controller I just realized it's pretty cool it looks simple to install so we'll see so we're gonna be installing that testing that out and we're just working on things and waiting on chicks to hatch so uh, I'm a little worried about the the hatching process uh, I don't think all the eggs were incubated at the same time so it could be a complete mess I don't know how many are gonna survive what we're here for it we're here for the adventure you guys are coming along so Let's go do a chicken check right now. I hear some squawking going on in here. Somebody's laying an egg. Things are happening. Looks like we got an Easter egger coming on strong. How we doing? How we doing, boy and girls? Who is in here squawking? Oh, okay. She's in your favorite box, huh? I got it box drama they, they all want to fight over the one nesting box for some reason now now we're gonna check on Barry White if this other one will shut up how we doing we still got eggs I don't hear any cheeping no cheeping yet so I've got this little house for mama and the babies I'm going to fill that with straw they're gonna have their own water and food in there and then I'm just gonna close that up basically just gonna put this out in front for a period of time so the other chickens can't get in there and bother them until they feel comfortable. I don't really know what's gonna happen in terms of the other chickens fighting with the with the chicks or trying to, uh, to hurt them. I've heard you could just let them go, let them do their thing and mama will protect them and all is good and I've heard that ain't gonna work so I don't know. It's an experiment. We're going to see what happens. Garden check with OSG. What Welcome. have we got over here? Tell over me about here? it. Oh, well, our newly planted still has the tag on blackberries. The last time they saw this, there was no growth in here whatsoever. Maybe, there wasn't maybe they even... just planted. So. Oh, you know what? You're like literally witnessing. Oh I checked this gosh. earlier this morning. Bean Nothing. sprouts popping. We've got green beans, lettuce, all these little things. I feel like my row is definitely not even. That's what you get for planting with a toddler. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely not even. <laughs> so, lettuce. Yeah, lettuce, okras, beets are down in here somewhere. And then we got green beans and then uh, berries. Berries. So the, uh, recently, we, so we've been picking blackberries actually out of the woods, wild blackberries, and they're, mm -hmm. they're very thorny. They're pretty nasty. I think this and, one has um, sprouted out too. You actually made a jam that was really good. I made a jam. I also made a blackberry uh, crisp. Crisp. I mean, we're, you know, living off land oh, here. What is that? A bug is already discovered. Looks like an African ant. I don't know what the heck that was. It'll probably eat our house here in a second. <laughs> and then hopefully these will kind of grow in a different period that the wild blackberries will. So we can pick the wilds. And then we can have our own here. You know what I'm saying? Going full blown crazy. You, you know what we're actually thinking about doing is we're we're thinking about re recharging the uh, the Lake Life Channel. Oh, just are naming we? it something different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just decided this. <laughs> okay. So uh, it will we can include all of our. I don't know. We just do so much around here. I feel like it's film worthy. All the organic organic mm -hmm. granola stuff mm -hmm. and then the recipes she's not interested never <laughs> that's not happening all right do you know how to do this no uh, you just here for moral support oh. <laughs> do you know what that means mm -mm. <laughs> it means you're just here to help just 
keep me going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, thanks. All right. I am trying to figure out this fuse panel, this um, bus bar, y'all. It's a little cattywampus, but good news is we have a bus bar in our rod box right here next to our live scope um, brain. So the, the wiring will be pretty easy. So I just got to figure out what's positive and negative. That's kind of important. Okay, I believe I've cracked the code here. And someone was obviously confused on this too that, that wired it. And quite honestly, this is how my Opus, my camper came uh, wired with one of these type deals and it, and it was also confusing. I, I switched it. But this top is a bus bar for negative. So all the negative goes to the top section and then you can just choose which positive you want to go to and have a, have a fuse on it. So they don't have to correspond. So you can basically put any of the negatives in any order up there, but then you're going to have to pick one here and then uh, put a fuse in it for positive. So it shouldn't be too hard to do. First of all, why am I, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this right now? I wanted to fish the beginning part of the season, the bass season, the heavy up shallow, you know, getting after it up shallow on the stumps, all that stuff where I'm going to be knocking around a little bit with the instruments. I wanted to get that out of the way without this uh, extra turret on there because I didn't know if, if it'd be easy to take off. Uh, apparently this one is uh, pretty easy to just disconnect. I'm not sure. We're going to see about that, but I, I'm just going to leave it on there most likely. And this enables me to like right now when everything's moving offshore, we got post-spawn crappie, you got, you know, white bass schools, largemouth on brush piles, all that fun stuff. Now I can get out there in the deep deeps and do the scanning, spot logging, beep, psh, and then, you know, in the fall, if I want to go up shallow again, I could take it off, but this is pretty much going to be a, a summer program for me. So let's grab the unit. Let's see if we can install this thing without screwing it up. So I found an extra perspective mode mount in the garage and I'm hoping that I'll be able to mount this one to this. This is an older model. So we're about to see if I can just switch these two in and out, bada bing, bada boom. It's going to be fabulous. All right, so if we could take this off, just this part right here, because this whole mount would be sort of a pain I think it's gonna match up. I'm gonna have to get an additional mount. Yeah, that's not really gonna, that's not gonna work. That's unfortunately just dream crushing. Not a huge deal, but I definitely wanna have a second one so I can just take it off really quick not have to worry about it because my last one I had a custom cover made for the boat so I never had to take it off so two reasons I want to be able to cover the boat without having to adjust the cover and then also just take it off when I'm like in a stumpy spot I don't I don't want to damage it for the most part the foresight insulation so far has been very easy it's just hardware now it's time for the wiring and that's where things always get interesting so 
little redneck in innovation here. No idea that this is gonna work. Um, and I've never wired a full 21 foot bass boat myself, electronics at the bow to whatever. So I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but uh, we're gonna try. So I'm gonna take this weed eater string, okay? Every good, every good dude has a weed eater string laying around. It's stiff enough where I can feed it through this hole right here. Now this Phoenix is like beautiful at the front because it's got four holes for uh, wiring additional accessories. But I just have to feed it over to the right. And I don't know if this is gonna be stiff enough to actually work, but we're gonna try and see if we can see it coming out this other side. I'm gonna turn this light on. Let's see if I can see this bright yellow weed eater line. Yeah, I definitely don't see it. I don't know where it's going. I can do this. It's just gonna the right angle of the dangle here. Okay, weed eater line, not working. We're gonna have to bump it up. We're going with some some wire, some steel wire. I don't know how else to do it. I guess if you're a pro, you have like a, a snake system, like a plumbing snake, you just get in there. That would probably work the best, but this is all I got. Oh, I got it, I got it. I got it, first try. back there but I can see it you keep feeding it through one of the things I commonly get asked at boat ramps is how do you like that Phoenix and usually what I say is one of my favorite things about it is the the finishing like the the build quality on the detail is good and everything's just clean like under the consoles clean uh, most of the wiring in, in here is, is done pretty well from the factory. Got the wire in. I'm going to have to run an extension. So I've got some 14 gauge wire here. And I kind of built a little kit from my uh, camper wiring experience. Uh, by the way, not a sponsor. But holy crud, these uh, Husky boxes, just for like organization of stuff. They got these clear tops that open like our Bass Mafia boxes. You can completely take them off or you can hinge them like that. Oh, bam, I've got Bass Mafia box with all the componentry in there and then all my wiring stuff is in here. So I'm gonna get some 14 gauge wire and splice it. And I've got some interesting little splicers. If you guys have never seen these before and you're into doing your own wiring work with you know boats or whatever there's these little they're called wago wago connectors all right so usually you know you take the you take the little blue deals with the plastic and you crimp them on both sides and you heat shrink them well with this you can just run the wire in it it's got these little clamps easily disconnect them uh, I don't know how it's gonna do with moisture we're gonna find out but these should be uh, money for this. There's one right there. So I got two of them for that 14 gauge size. Hopefully that'll work. All right, we got our wire attached to our wire. And we're gonna feed it through that hole and then we'll splice it inside of the rod box. So let's pull through and see what happens. All right, now we're ready to put on our connectors. I'm gonna put on some heat shrink. Just gonna try to keep the neatness of the silver bullet going here. All right, we're wired up. Negative bus bar, got the positive. Right there, it's only a five amp fuse. I don't know if that's gonna work, but we're about to find out. So this is the remote and it's actually 
Bluetooth, I'm supposing. Which is really cool, so I can just put it wherever. I don't have to hardwire it in. It's one more step to do. All right, I don't know how it's supposed to pair. I, I know nothing. Instructions are right here. Scan mode. Attach foresight till uh, connect power leads. Mount the foot pedal in the desired location. That's all it says. I'm just gonna turn on all power. Full program. My power switch here, which I think connects to that accessory board. Okay, remote. How is this supposed to work? Okay, something is not working. There's a, there's a, there's a button here. You gotta hit the power button. That's what it is. You gotta hit the power button. Okay, let's see if this thing is paired up. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. I was like, what? Well, my wiring couldn't have been that bad. It could have been. It could have been real bad, quite honestly. But I think I did an okay job. I just, I don't see how this is going to pair. I don't see how this is going to pair with that. Just... I just saw it move. Oh, it's working. It's working. There it goes. Oh, that is Slick Willy Biscuits. Dang, y'all, check this out. So quiet, I didn't even hear it. I guess it's just automatically paired. There she blows. Wa-bam. LFG wiring jobs. What's up? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll tuck these wires up a little bit, make them all nice and neat, put some zip ties. Um, and the connection, final connection that I made yeah, it's kind of stuck up here I'm gonna show you guys there it is so that's what it looks like right there using those wagos wagos however you want to say it and I just zip tied it I don't know how that's gonna hold up with the moisture but there's this beautiful little lip up there where I can tuck these wires okay job complete uh, it feels pretty stable you know, I, I feel like it is it is gonna be deep enough. You know, I could still push it down a little bit more. Uh, I don't wanna get this thing too long to where it's just rattling around. And I could put like a brace right here, but that kind of defeats the purpose of, this is the best part of it. Just quick disconnect. So you just unscrew this. And this pops out of this little latch i gotta look at it because i'm still not sure what i'm doing okay that goes down and then i just pop it off we'll see when we hit some waves we'll see how solid it is but everything feels really good and it's quiet which is really nice especially for the crappies getting close love to see it okay just gave the chickens some treats it's time to check on the eggs here's our mother our broody hen technically at the moment See if we got any close to hatching. How would we really know? Uh, this is kind of slick how I've got this box. So there's no bottom so I can just lift it up when the chicks have hatched. And then uh, I don't have to worry about them getting over that lip. They're so warm. Gosh, I wonder if I could just feel them moving in there if they're about to hatch. I gotta go get a flashlight and check.
definitely a chicken in there. Oh my gosh, it's starting to crack. It's cracking. That one's that one's happening right now. It just moved. I feel like we're in that scene in Jurassic Park. This is happening, guys. Like the sh it, it, the shell is. Oh my god, it literally moved again. It's trying to hatch out. Holy cow, this is crazy. All right, this one. Oh my gosh, this chicken is moving in here, guys. This little chicken's moving. All right, this is happening. Like this is the next, the next 24 hours, it is going down. I don't know if you could see this. It's gonna be really hard to see. This front beige colored egg right there. It is cracking. It is cracking right there. Like literally when I picked it up, it started it started hatching. Okay, it's not hatching yet, Amy, but it's just starting to open. I want to see the one. Okay, it's a pink egg, or it's a beige colored egg. It's right here. If you look really close, you can see that it's starting to, starting to crack a little bit. That's the chicken's Little yeah, beak. I do. Oh my gosh, I hear it. Did you hear that? Yeah. Do you hear that peep? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Barry White, she needs to get back to her nest. Let's leave her alone. Let's let her do her thing, okay? Mm -hmm. I heard like little cheeps inside of the egg. Yes. I don't even know if that's yeah. possible. Sure. She heard yeah. it too. Pressure's on. Got the camera up here. <laughs> In the kitchen. Uh, white bass fish cakes going on. You guys have seen the white bass fish cakes. I know some of you commented they're they're really good. If you haven't tried them, you got to try them. So some of the white bass that me and Emmy caught the other day, those are going in there. We caught, uh, I think we had 10. So there's 20 fillets in there. We're gonna see if that's gonna be enough. Is it enough for everybody? I was enough. I mean, how many are you gonna eat? Oh, a couple of them. And then a little appetizer. We got some shishitos, shishito peppers, a little ranch, a couple cold pops. Good to go. Not a fish cake left. So delicious. Chickens are going in here to roost. Let's just see. We got any hatchlings, or this is probably gonna happen in the middle of the night, but let's see what we got going on in here. You got any babies trying to come out? Oh my gosh, she is like so broody. Well, can I see? Because you kind of had one starting to hatch out on us. I guess she's got it handled. Mother knows best. I think when I wake up tomorrow morning, it's gonna be cheap, cheap, cheap going on. So you guys stay tuned. Doppler unit installed on the Silver Bullet fishing trip to come on that. Thank you guys for hanging out with me here at the Treehouse today. If you want to stay tuned for more outdoor action, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys on another outdoor adventure.